Arab Tov Khabri, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live back here in the studios here in Prague, Czech Republic. There, after a week of being in Israel, and you have not even begun to see the full extent of information interviews that have been done, that we have done there, uh, information that we've been able to obtain that we want to share with you here on Israeli News Live. Some of that effect, uh, affecting our insights that we have gleaned about current events that are going on throughout the Middle East and uh, even other parts of the world. And right now though, before we go into some of those things there, and of course those interviews will continue to share, be aired here on Israeli News Live, as well as Rise Up Children of God, my wife's channel, Yana Benin's channel there, uh, where she is doing special interviews that some of you may want to catch as well. Now earlier today, we did air uh, uh, this interview here only hours ago, the two-state solution, Israel's secret, Simon uh, Tov stated in an interview there. Now he also goes into Israel's military presence in Greece and in Saudi Arabia. Uh, things that you are not being told about, things that we're not seeing so much in the media, and we were able to confirm some of this information as well. So we're gonna be getting into that. But before we go into that, let's quickly go over to Russian news right now. We are seeing what looks like may be a very plot to destabilize uh, Russia before a military confrontation. The headlines of the articles that you're seeing, or the article you're seeing here, Ukraine's organized a rally on April the 2nd to storm the Kremlin. Um, what is going on? It's almost like Ukraine is really being used as a catalyst. Uh, the, of course, Russia blamed the CIA for overthrowing the Ukrainian government, destabilizing the nation when it was under uh, President Yukonovich there, that it was actually done by the CIA. It was an organized Maidan coup, and it's almost as if they are trying to now bring that about inside of Russia. Uh, the unauthorized action that took place on March the 26th in Moscow has its very own unexpected, uh, its, its own very unexpected and does not say that it will have pleasant consequences. A number of oppositions like to throw young people and teenagers under the police baton since they decided to repeat this experiment again on April the 2nd is what the article is actually stating. Now, here's what's interesting though, in light of that, we have that particular event going on, and we also have on ABC News, Good Morning America, uh, Russia's uh, uh, spokesman there, Dmitry Peskov, uh, he's actually the Kremlin spokesman, came on Good Morning America in a statement that he made that was absolutely shocking. I'll play it for you here, that we are in a situation worse worse than the Cold War. Watch what he we're says the here. the lowest point in history, that means we're in a new Cold War. New Cold War, well, uh, maybe even worse. Maybe even worse, taking into account uh, actions of, of the present presidential administration. Worse than the Cold War? Washington. Well, of course, of course. And he reiterates it after the, uh, uh, the man that's interviewing there on Good Morning America there, he it says, uh, yes, uh, of, of course, worse than a Cold War. What's he talking about? What's going on? Well, you know, right now I just happened to pick this up from Lorenzo on uh, Already Happened. You can easily, though, take a look at, again, the continued movement of troops and equipment towards uh, Russia's border there, Hungary now. We see uh, more U.S. troops and tanks going along there. Uh, we, now we have, uh, was a, a copy of tanks moved in Warsaw, Poland this morning, the direction of the northwest, probably, uh, or the uh, or SZ. Uh, this is, again, if you're going to the northwest, you're getting probably a little bit closer in, in lines of Kaliningrad. Now, what would that have to do with anything? Well, we, we see that there is a major push towards Kaliningrad, and Russia seems to be doing exactly the same thing. Now, this particular article here on Novaya uh, Gazeta, um, I think I'm actually pronouncing that name wrong there. My wife's corrected me on that before because of the Russian language there, so I apologize for that. But anyway, uh, Rav4, we'll use that name there, is the easiest one for me to say. But anyway, on this article here, the, the title of the article is actually translating out to trains to the west, the closer to the Russian-Belarusian exercise, the more puzzles. Now they're talking about Zapad. 
and Zapad 2017, which literally in uh, Russian means West 2017. And the article, as you, of course you can see, the military equipment on the trains there headed to Belarus, uh, goes into why so many train cars, and yet at the same time, according to the official statement, the exercise, which begins on September 14th through the 20th, there's supposed to be a total of 13,000 soldiers, only 3,000 which are Russian, 280 units of military equipment. But yet, the Russian uh, ministry, according to the Kremlin, has actually purchased 4,126 military train transport cars for the territory. And according to some Russian experts and former uh, 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 aides inside of the Russian or military uh, officers inside the Russian government, those that are actually opposed to the uh, Kremlin as well, have been very concerned that what this is, translates out to be is Russian aggression, and some of them believing that Russia is preparing to take uh, and make a corridor straight into Kaliningrad through Belarus. Well, the Kremlin does respond to those allegations saying that no, it was actually done for 2,000 cars there, 2,000 cars back. And of course, as they cited in 2009, when the exercises first began, that they had done over 6,000 cars and that it is not a Russian aggression. Now, I kind of think personally that what Russia is doing is Russia is probably getting ready to protect Kaliningrad and with such a huge buildup of military presence by NATO on Russia's border, Russia is not taking any chances. Also, just to let you know as well, we're finding out that Poland has ordered uh, uh, a, a shipment of the United States Patriot missile batteries to be deployed inside of Poland. And it only gets even more serious as we go along. Let's take a look here as well. TASS Russian News, uh, we're finding out now, Moscow puzzled by Tillerson's statement about Russian aggression in Ukraine. Secretary of State uh, Tillerson is, is stating now that until Crimea is returned back to Ukraine, there will be no lifting of sanctions for Russia. So it's almost as if we have no other choice but to see some type of conflict unless a compromise is reached between all these superpowers. And it almost looks as if Donald Trump's uh, stand for Russia is quickly dim diminishing. And of course, Mr. Flynn, the former general there, now is saying through his own attorney that he's willing to tell all for diplomatic immunity. What is really going on? It, it, and, and, and it's almost as if now the Trump administration may be pushing more towards war in order to hide and cover up things that they're trying to uncover. Especially in the case that Flynn is saying he's got a quote unquote from his attorney, a lot to tell. Gosh just seems to never, never end. Also, this particular article here, another shocker, and of course, another reason why we are watching this closer and closer was transpiring here in Europe, and that is NATO was told why they need extras to play Russian. What you're seeing right here on your screen here is that the NATO allies were actually bringing in Russian-speaking people to play all parts of society and civil society, speaking the Russian languages so that the NATO people were able to work with them uh, on a battlefield type of situation. And of course, Russia considering this a threat as well, an act of an aggression as Russian authorities are calling it. They say, why do you need Russians for this? Well, according to NATO, it's because a lot of the areas in Eastern Europe are formerly Russian speaking areas. And this is one of the reasons why they wanted to do it. But in the exercises, it's nothing but war. And of course, dealing with people that are speaking the Russian language. It seems there's no end in a buildup on Russia's border. And Russia also a huge buildup build in Belarus and Kaliningrad. And of course, Ukraine majorly concerned over what's going on in Kaliningrad. Or excuse me, in Belarus. What is actually going on? How will this all play out? it still remains to be seen exactly which direction that's going to go. Now, let me take you back here to Simon Tov. Simon Tov, this is, let's jump back into the Israeli section here of uh, what's going on here. I want you to hear what Simon Tov is saying. Uh, he does speak about a secret deal under Ariel Sharon was signed a two-state solution 
was actually signed with proof. The very lady that was actually there in the meeting, one of Errol Sharon's aides, had shared with them, weeping, that a two-state solution was signed. No media was allowed to be there. No media was aware of what went on. High dignitaries from both the United States and Europe were present as a two-state solution was signed. But in this particular part of the interview, he's going to also talk about Israel's preparations for taking down Iran and working with other nations. Watch what he has to say. Saudi Arabia waiting for an attack on Iran. Egypt and Jordan, there's an alliance. Right now, Israel is in Greece. The Israeli Air Force is in Greece doing maneuvers with, I forget, one of the Arab League nations. I forget what the name, which one it is. It's become very evident that Israel is, is drawing, trying to draw her strength and her support from her enemies. And it's going to fail. And the cost is going to be a massive loss of life. Mm -hmm. And because Israel, historically, we see in the scripture, went to Egypt looking for an ally when their greatest ally was the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. And Israel today, once again, how m many people are actually totally privy to what's going on? I don't know. I wouldn't. Yehuda Glick was speaking here yes, a couple of days ago. Yeah. I went to him when he was leaving. I said, What can you tell me about this regional cooperation? He said, I don't know nothing about it. Mm. And I was actually quite upset. Here's a man that's a member of Knesset, and he doesn't know what the government of Israel is up to. The, yesterday, there was an um, Arab League summit here in Jordan. Now imagine that right there. Is that not shocking or what? And yes, Israel is involved in exercises there inside of Greece with their own military and as well with, uh, as he says there, I'm not sure exactly which uh, Middle Eastern country it is. We'll look here in just a moment there. But what's fascinating about this is that they're there because the Greece, Greece actually has the S-300 system. And so Israel, Turkey is actually was the al uh, regional ally they were there with. They're, they're, uh, let's just take just for a moment here. We'll go back to this and I'll share that with you, what that is, because we actually do have, here we go right here, Russian Insider. Israeli Air Force trains to take on Russian-made missile systems. The Israeli Air Force is participating in extensive uh, inter international exercises in Greece alongside pilots from America, Greece, Italy, and the UAE, United Arab Emirates. That's what it was. I apologize. It was not Turkey. Uh, they are preparing to deal with how or how to deal with Russia's S-300 system that is deployed inside of Iran as well as Syria. So why is Israel involved with this type of, uh, 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 this type of drills other than they are getting ready to take on some type of a military challenge there in the Middle East. Now, according to Simon Tov, he believes that Iran is the target. And as he stated, Israel has bombers already waiting for the go-ahead inside of Saudi Arabia. Of course, they've got the backing of the Saudis. No doubt they got the backing of President Trump now. But under Obama administration, when they were ready to take out Iran, Trump, uh, excuse me, Obama said that he would shoot the planes down if they went there. Now also noticed this greater uh, alliance that Simon Tov talked about. He said he, he asked Yehuda Glick when he was there the other day. Well, that was the interview that we had with Yehuda Glick right here on uh, Mount Zion there at the Harp of David. We were on the roof there overlooking the Temple Mount in the background there. And of course, a different situation, uh, information we got there. But he also spoke at the conference that we had there, Pesach 17. And a very, very exciting conference there. You, you might want to catch that if you haven't already caught it here on Israeli News Live. We've already aired that conference there where he just uh, he stated some of the things that was on his heart about things. But I have to agree with Simon Tov when he said, of course, now Simon Tov was disappointed that the MK member, Yehuda Glick, did not know what was really going on about that. But it doesn't surprise me because you have to understand Yehuda Glick, who is also a, or not was, is a rabbi, is more of a religious leader. 
and his heart's desire is of what I call the religious Zionism, the Zionism of the Jewish people coming to their homeland to see the coming of the Messiah. I don't think that Rabbi Glick is key. In fact, I know he's not interested in seeing war with his neighbors. He's tried to make peace with his neighbors. He's tried to reach out to the Arab community to, to work together with them. But on the other hand, there is an elite group that maybe, well, not maybe, that are working with no doubt political leaders inside of the Israeli government for the maybe what is many call the greater Zionist project. That's not the real Zionist spirit. That's an evil Zionist spirit that is done by the elites like the Rothschilds and so forth. Not that true Israel, but a fake Israel that would endanger not only the Israelis, but as well as the Arabs that are living there in that nation. And as Simon Tov said, it will backfire without a doubt. Let me share with you though something here, because remember, Simon Tov, in this interview, which we didn't play that clip for, you said that there was already a two-state solution signed. But watch how MK Yehuda Glick stands here on this issue as well. Not a two-state solution, but one state. Same time, in those 70 years since the establishment of the State of Israel till today, we have developed one of the most developed countries in the world. At the same time, people are exploiting them and living and forcing them to continue living in refugee camps because somebody has a political interest for them to continue there. So we're going to continue building. We're going to offer the Palestinians, offer all the Arabs living here to benefit from being part of Israel. This is Israel. And there, it's, there's, no, there's no way going back reverse. We're going. It, you know, it's just so beautiful the way that. Uh... Uh, Rabbi Yehuda Glick, the MK member, Knesset member there, spoke about there. He looks at an inclusion with the Arab community there, with equal rights, but he is for a Jewish state, for a one-state solution, not a two-state solution. And I have to agree with him on that issue there. I know there's a lot of people that do not like that, but as we have also discovered as well, many of the Palestinian women that live in, the, in this region of the world would not want a two-state solution to begin with either because of Sharia law. And yes, under Mahmoud Abbas, they would enact a Sharia law. This is something that they would not like because it would greatly uh, oppress the women of this region here. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very, very troubling things that are happening, that are going on. Uh, also, Russia rejects appeal to set up the deport. U.S. Chabad rabbi declared threat to national security. That's one other thing I forgot to bring out to you. Haras is reporting this. Russia declaring a Chabad rabbi a threat to national security. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but recently, uh, well, no, I think we said it here on Israeli News Live, President Putin has outlawed the Jehovah's Witness organization. Now, some people might find all this strange, or Chabad Rabbi, the Jehovah's Witnesses, etc. But you have to remember, and I, I'm, I'm not for the idea of him doing any of these things either, but with what we shared with you that's going on right now there in Russia, uh, they're getting ready to do a major protest again in uh, Moscow at the, Krim, uh, at the Kremlin there, trying to topple the country. But the, you, the Russia was originally uh, targeted and overtaken by Jesuits, Catholic Jesuits uh, that brought in Stalin and Mussolini. These were Jesuits to begin with. It was done by a religious order there in order to crush the Russian Orthodox Church. And... I think this is where Putin is very concerned as well, is that a lot of religious people that, coming in, that are coming into the country are actually used as spies. Now, I'm not saying they are by no means, neither in the case of the Chabad rabbi nor the Jehovah's Witness people. I don't mean it that way either. But I do find it interesting that he is fearful because he knows this is how the Tsarist Russia fell when it was considered a Christian nation fail under the threat of Roman Catholicism. And I think he's worried about that happening again.
I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Check out the broadcasts that we've shared with you here, uh, and we'll put the links as well to make it easier for you in the description below. And by the way, too, if you uh, appreciate the work that we're doing at Israeli News Live, Danoon Institute, and of course, Yana's channel, Rise Up Children of God, and you'd like to support that, just go to IsraeliNewsLive.org, and you can be a part of keeping this broadcast live and on the air. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.